Well, hello, and it's really good to be with you. A very warm welcome if you've come to listen to our story for church at four. Um, you, you, you might have noticed I've got a candle with me here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually light the candle, not only because that's what we do at church at four, but also because when I light the candle, it's going to remind us of what's in our story for today. So I'm just going to light that as we begin and then just put it down very carefully over here. And if I put it there, then you should still be able to see it. Well, you may not be able to see the flame terribly well because this is a candle that we first lit at Easter and we've lit it every day since and it has burned all the way down. But candles are a good reminder of what our story is about today. And our story today comes from the same book that we use every time we read a story at Church at Four. It's called The Story of the Bible, and the stories are by Bob Hartman and Christina Nagy. And the story that I'm going to share with you today is about a helper. And that helper, of course, is the gift of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus promised his friends he would send. Just to remind you of where we are in the story of Jesus, if you're not sure, Jesus has been with his disciples and he's been, been crucified, he's died, and then he rises to life again. But after he rises to life, before he goes back to be with God in heaven, he appears to his disciples and he says I've got to leave you soon they are quite worried and they say where are you going and he says don't worry I'm going to be with God but I won't leave you on your own I will send a helper to you and of course that helper is the gift of the Holy Spirit and that's what we're going to read about in our story today just before we begin there's only one one picture in this uh, story but it's actually quite a lovely picture I don't know if you can see at the bottom of the page there is a picture of lots of people they are people who've come from across the world to to be together at a special time called Pentecost and can you see they've all got these above the, uh, the, they've got these above their heads which is, of course, like our candle here. And we tend to think of this this time when the Holy Spirit came as the church's birthday. And that that's always quite appropriate, I think, because this picture always reminds me a little bit of the candles which we have on birthday cakes. Um, because these people had all had the gift of the Holy Spirit, which had come. But now let's just read the story together. It's really, really good story. And this is the story of what Jesus promised that he would send people a helper and this is the story of the day when that helper arrived. Jesus told his friends that they had to wait. They had to wait in Jerusalem to wait for the helper which he had promised he would send them. So they waited. They waited and they prayed, not for one day, 
or two, three, four, not even a week. They prayed for ten days. And while they waited, the streets of Jerusalem filled with people from the whole world. People came from every direction, from the north, from the south, from the east and from the west. People from all around the world who came together to mark the feast of Pentecost. Jesus' friends were in an upstairs room when all of a sudden something extraordinary began to happen. Does anybody know what it was? Oh, let's find out, shall we? They heard something. They heard a wind blow and it was blowing harder than the biggest storm. Bigger than that storm when Jesus was in the boat. Bigger than that. Much bigger than any storm they'd ever heard. Even though they heard a great wind, they couldn't see anything moving about. They heard the noise of a candle flame. They watched the tongues of fire lick and lap and land upon their heads. But nobody could smell any smoke. And then it happened. The helper came, the Holy Spirit, and filled them all with the presence and the power of God. But that wasn't all. What they heard next was talking. Strange words pouring out of each and every mouth. When they heard this, they rushed outside to tell the crowd what had happened. And now all of a sudden everybody could understand. People who'd come from across the world, people from the north and from the south, from the east and from the west, people from around the world had come together. And now all of Jesus' friends were able to speak in different languages, languages they'd never even learned. How could this be? All because of God's Holy Spirit. What better way to tell the world about Jesus? Oh, so that's what you're talking about, said a man who'd come from Spain. That's amazing, said a woman who had come from Africa. Uh, tell me again, asked a man who had come from France. But there were many people there, and there were others who thought that Jesus' friends were just talking nonsense. Hey, these people are drunk, one man shouted. It's nothing but a load of rubbish. And that's when Peter stood up. Peter, who had been with Jesus right from the start. Peter, whose job it was to go out in a boat and to catch fish. Peter, who had never made a speech in his whole life. Peter stood up and said, listen, everyone, he shouted. We are not filled with wine. We're filled with a different gift, God's Holy Spirit. Many years ago, a prophet said that this would happen, that God would send his spirit to help not just special and important people like prophets and kings. No, this gift would be for 
for everyone. That has happened to us today and it has happened because Jesus who died on a cross was brought back to life by God himself and now sits beside God in heaven. It was Jesus who sent this wonderful gift just for us, not just for us, but for the whole world. Jesus, who is the special one we've been waiting for for such a long time. Jesus, who was put to death by you. The people were very sorry for what they'd done to Jesus. <gasps> what can we do? They cried. Tell God you're sorry, said Peter. Let him take away all the bad things that you have done. And if you do this, you will be given his Holy Spirit too. So that's just what the people did. Now, how many were there, do you think? There were five or ten? Maybe a hundred? No, there were loads more than that. Three thousand of them. Three thousand! They told God that they were really sorry. They were baptised. They were filled with God's Holy Spirit. People from the north and from the south, people from the east and the west, people came together from all over the world. That's an amazing story. And there may be some of you listening who've been baptised. There may even be some of you who are listening who've been baptised by me. And you know when I baptise people, I mark them with the sign of the cross. And I say that that's a mark that will stay be with, with people for their entire life, even though they can't see it. It won't actually stay as a mark on their forehead, but that is a promise that stays with them. And it's a bit like that with the Holy Spirit. We might not go around with tongues on our heads, little, little candle flames like this, which you can't really see on the camera, but I promise you it is burning. Um, um, we might not be able to see that, but that gift, that gift stays with us for our whole lives. And it's what helps us to do what God wants us to do. Helps us to grow into the people God wants us to be. And so I'm really glad you were able to, to stay for this story. There may be some more on this channel, but particularly if you've come for church at four, do enjoy the rest of Church of Four. Do enjoy hearing about the church's birthday with Dom. Do enjoy your birthday cake and your party pop poppers and your balloons. That will be lovely. Um, but, but do have a great time and I look forward to being back with you really soon. Bye-bye.